Do you sometimes feel like you're dying in data, drowning in data, gagging on evidence, trying to figure out, okay, you know, there's just so much of this around. What's real and what isn't? The demand for more of a systematic review of the science, more of a meta-analysis type of approach has been growing dramatically. And guess what? As demand has grown, the ability to dive into the literature with, with improving database access has made that a big deal as well. So what happens is we've gotten a huge increase in the number of meta-analyses or system, systematic reviews. Now, they're, most, they're very similar. Uh, systematic review tends to imply a little bit more of a, of a, a clinical trial of a treatment, whereas meta-analyses tends to apply more towards epidemiological studies, questions of the science, what is the human body like in this specific area, that sort of thing. There's a fellow named John Ioannidis. I think I pronounced that correctly, John Ioannidis who's been getting a lot of press recently because he's been uh, doing some things to point out that, you know what, we should be careful which meta-analyses we take a look at and which ones we rely on completely. And I can tell you, I've, I've seen the same thing. We've covered that in a couple of uh, videos talking about CIMT, for example. The CIMTs still are not used based on a couple of flawed meta-analyses. So, why is that happening? Here's one of the things that you would hear from uh, you know, one of this. These systematic reviews have become a marketing tool. So who markets and what do they market? Well, obviously you got the first one right. Big Pharma uh, markets and they want people to buy their medication. They want docs to prescribe their medication or their treatment. But it's an interesting point Big Pharma is not the only one that markets. Look at this. In the U.S., the rates of publication of meta-analyses and system, system, systematic reviews, easy for me to say, huh? Uh, systematic reviews peaked at around uh, 11 and 12, 2011, 2012. But look what's going on in China. It's just continuing to go right out the roof. Now, with all of these being generated, just how many, what, what portion of them are really good, are both uh, structurally sound, analytically sound, and clinically useful, or useful in terms of policy or a decision on whether to, to a go or no go on purchasing a, a medication or prescribing it. According to Ioannidis, about 3%. In other words, 1 in 30. I think he's being a little bit skeptical there, but maybe not. I mean, uh, there's pro actually, maybe not, because there's a ton of systematic reviews that are generated by both pharma and uh, countries like China that I just ignore coming out of the blocks. I tend to be... Um, be present and focused in some areas of science which tend to be a little bit cleaner, at least the sources that I use. So, you know, what are we supposed to do? Actually, there's a reason, that's exactly the reason why a group like the Cochrane Group exists. If you've never heard of it, you may not have seen many of my videos. I do talk a lot about uh, the Cochrane Group and their um, standards. They've created standards on how to do a meta-analysis. One of the most obvious standards the, that Ioannidis mentions, and it's clearly in the Cochrane Group as well, is that you publish, you develop your research format and technique before you go into the study. You don't go in, research all the literature that you can find, then come back and say, okay, this is how I'm going to do this study. It's amazing the number of studies that are done what you would think would be backwards like that. Great way to cherry pick data. Buyer beware, both in terms of medicine and in terms of the science that doctors use to select the medicines that they prescribe for you. If you've made it this far,
Thank you for your interest. Hey, if you're interested in a two-day boot camp type of environment where you get your CIMT, you get all your labs, and we spend two days going over the whole thing, check out our event. It's November 8th and 9th at Louisville. Great place to fly into in November at the University of Louisville.